Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Welcome to our webinar, Generating Revenue with Sublimation onto Rigid Substrate. My name is Lily Hunter, Product Manager here at Roland DGA. Hi, I'm Jay Davis with Universal Woods, representing Chromalux brand. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. All right, so let's get started. Let's take a look at our takeaways. We're going to understand the basics of sublimation. So we'll go through that very, very quickly. Uh, just because it's so unique from other printing methods using eco solvent or UV printing. Right. Having the right tools. A look at various commercial applications. So that's going to be the bulk of it. And then towards the end, we're going to have a, a, a we're going to look at snapshot of potential ROI, and we'll go more into details. Right. Really a thirty thousand foot view of what the ROI looks like. Exactly. Right, in generic terms, but I think it'll be very interesting. Yeah. So you you know how to charge for things. Okay, basics of sublimation. So for those of you who don't know sublimation, and this is something before I came to Roland, I was 14 and a half years at a media manufacturer that sold into Ecosolvent, UV, latex printing technologies where you saw the prints beautifully right. immediately out of the printer. As it's coming off the printer. Right, as it's coming off the printer. So when they said sublimation, and they say, oh, it's a, um, basically, sublimation is a solid to gas bypassing the liquid phase. I could not grasp it because I'm thinking, well, in a sense, the ink different. liquid? So basically, what they're trying to say is in transfer sublimation, you are printing onto a transfer paper. That's key. Yes. And then on that paper, those ink, liquid ink droplets become solid. And here's the key part that no one explained to me was that at the heat press, around 400 degrees is where the magic of sublimation takes place. That's right. And that's where the solid inks turned into gas, release off the paper, and, and penetrates into the polyester coating. So that is the helpful tip to anyone who is wanting to do this is you need the printer, but right. you need that heat press. So, with that in mind, and we get this a lot, a lot, a lot at trade shows. So first you're printing on transfer paper, you're printing it in mirror, and then you transfer it. So, at the Roland booth, I'm usually next to one of our other printers where the outputs are vibrant and, ugly and, and beautiful. <laughs> right. and, and here's just a, an example of, of my prints. Okay, it comes out and, and people will come up hey, your colors Something's are off. off. Yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't do your right. homework or you're a really bad employee <laughs> to right. let this happen. And gee, why is it in mirror? So that's right. when you have to go, well, wait for it. So at the heat press, so you, this is pre-printed. And then here is an example of your blank, the Chromalux blank. It has a plastic cover to it's protect a protective the cover, right? Mm -hmm. To keep it clean until you're ready to press. And then at the heat press, so here you go. That's the difference. All right. So this is where when you show, and then at the end, here's the paper. And this is a, a sign of good transfer paper. It releases most of the inks. Right. All right. right. And a little ink goes a long ways, especially for rigid substrates. So, so this is the tricky part of, of um, explaining sublimation. So this is kind of like the, the before, during, and after. Okay. It's really a really unique part. It really is what stands out about sublimation versus other technologies. Mm -hmm. And certainly it has a value proposition of its own. Yes. In that when you finish a rigid product with the sublimation printing technology, you've got ink, like you said, that's mm -hmm. encapsulated inside our specialized coatings so that the ink is not sitting on top like every other print method or technology. Right, right. It's sitting within our coating. It's a and chemical poly bond. Yes, and polyester is the key. So that actually um, brings us to the right tools and what is needed for sublimation. So four main components are needed. First, you need a sublimation printer. We have two printers here at Roland in the sublimation family, the Texart family. We have the RT640 and XT640. Difference? RT640 has one print head, XT, Big Brother has two staggered print heads. Main difference, speed. They're right. both 64 inches wide, which comes in handy for these large commercial applications if you're doing the four by eights. 
And also, it has a bulk ink system already included. So in the ROI section, you'll see where that comes into play because the cost of each one liter pouch of inks is $99. So, and you don't need a lot. So your price per, your cost per square foot for the inks right. really comes down. We talk about liter cost versus milliliter cost. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a single little desktop cartridge can cost as much as a roll in full liter of ink. Absolutely. And then here's another question I always get asked or a statement. My dealer told me that I can do sublimation with the TrueViz EcoSolvent printer, and the answer is no, 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 no. You misunderstood. Um, like I said, the other print technologies do not require a heat press for the colors to become vibrant. And also, you do not want to mix a water-based sublimation ink with an EcoSolvent-based right. ink. If the two mix together, it gums up, there's a physical reaction, you will need to replace print heads, ink line, dampers, everything that ink touches. So don't do that. Don't mix and match. Key takeaway, don't do that. Yes, yes. Or you can, and we can sell you another printer. <laughs> but that would be bad of me to do that. All right, another key thing is transfer paper. This is a thing that people want to go cheap on because they're like, I'm going to throw it away. Right. So here's just a few listings of some common um, brands out there. And what's your take on transfer paper? Transfer paper is critical. It's a key part of this whole equation mm -hmm. in that the entire process is based on this release of ink from the paper right. to our coating. Right, and then you want it to release. To create that beautiful, rigid product that we're looking for. Right, I right. I think one of the key takeaways here is just lo really looking for a paper that's non clay based. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the clay based papers, when they heat up to this kind of temperature up as high as 400 degrees, mm -hmm. tiny little particles of clay will flake off and create really distracting, uh, frustrating issues when you're trying to figure out where do these little specks come from. And right, or even like a hazy look. Right, right. It doesn't create a, a full release. So these are some good brands here. I think True Picks represents another great brand. And there's certainly other products out there that are fine as well. Absolutely. And then don't go cheap on the heat press. A lot of times I tell people that your heat press will probably cost more than your printer or about the same price. So Clearly. you need that even heat, you need that stability. So what are a few brands out there that are that you're seeing the well, I mean, You see some here in GeoNite um, has certainly been around for a mm -hmm. long time. They make a great product. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other ones, and, and before you even get there, let's say some of the stuff we get questions all the time. I'm looking at a product very inexpensive overseas. Yes, yes. Really haven't seen anything come from overseas that per, that, that creates a consistent a reliable result. By overseas, we mean the low cost, more so from China, possibly with no Eastern. support, or Eastern yeah, Europe, I mean, or where there's no local support, and if something goes wrong. Right, there's hey. huge delays in that. We really yeah. recommend some of the brands you, like I said, Geo Knight, Hicks you have here, when you talk about large format, a four by eight production. Monte Antonio makes certainly a, a beautiful product. Right, and they're based um, out in Italy. Based out in Italy. And there's a new company um, or a new product being produced by a company called Safa. Mm -hmm. They're in France. They'll be coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll probably see them at some of the larger trade shows here in the U.S. coming up. And they actually designed their product to work specifically for chromolets mm -hmm. and specifically for rigid application. Mm -hmm. And they make a beautiful product. We've tested a couple here in the U.S. Okay. and with some fabulous results. So the biggest thing is issues with sublimation is ghosting. That's when there's any slight shift of movement between rigid substrate, paper, any, you're going to see that ghosting. At and temperature you're talking at about. At temperature, right. So even the mechanics of opening and closing, if there's a little boop, jolt or whatever, it's like, right. oh my gosh, my four by eight panel, you have this little one area that messed up or... Or if you have um, the wrong paper, you have, oh, there's this one speck that didn't right. come through. So you don't want to throw away the panel because of that. Right. And well, like then, I said, it's yeah. just really critical that that heat is even throughout the entire platen. Mm -hmm. And if we took a measuring device and measured the heat across some inexpensive products out on the market today, right. you would find big variance between the corners or the edges to yes. the middle. And that creates really frustrating scenarios for production guys out there. Right. And here's your turn to talk a little bit about Chromelex and what sets you guys apart from what's out there. 
Well, I think our coatings clearly is what makes us. We're a, mm -hmm. basically, we, we make rigid substrates from a number of different materials. Mm -hmm. Aluminum probably being our, our most well-known product. Right, right. Um, and the applications we'll go through in a little bit. So we've got some exciting application yes, images yes. to show you how it's being used. But we really never stop pushing. We, we like to believe we are the best. We are the finest product on the market today when it comes to rigid sublimation. Right. And we never stop moving that bar. We are constantly Absolutely. pushing that bar ahead, ahead, and ahead. You guys have been around for a long time where you guys have made a lot of the mistakes that some of the newer companies are making where it's familiar as, oh, well, we kind of were there. We did that and we improved. So Terry from Universal Woods and I did a webinar about a little over a year ago and it's in our webinar archives. So we, we and if you want to take a look, we, we go through more of, you know, in the factory, how things are made, mm -hmm. the coatings and and just the differences between right. Chroma Lux brand and the coating versus others. So we right. won't go too much Good. into that, but it is definitely a durable, durable product. All right, so now the fun part. We're going to talk about some of the various applications. So these are actual installations. We didn't Google this. Uh, so um, Jay's going to go over some of the different applications. So hospitality, that's, we are seeing that more and more, whether it's in apartments or those high-end apartments to right. hotels. Yeah, this particular one you walk in, that's a four by eight sheet hanging over the stairwell that you see there. Mm -hmm. And it really creates a certain ambiance when you walk in. This is a, kind of a smallish lobby, mm -hmm. but that giant panel being hung up somewhat over your head, we have to look up and see it. And this really striking image mm -hmm. uh, really sets the tone for the type of place that you're in. It's a high end facility. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle facility that you live in these apartments slash condominium complex, but it right. has everything from restaurants to um, yoga rooms to meditation center to all these wow. different things that create a lifestyle. Right. And they're certainly trying to give you that feeling when you walk in the door. Chromelux does that. Absolutely. So here's another one. Here's a, a hotel at the Ritz Carlton, not too far from us. Right. Some of you may have heard about this place. It's a very nice hotel chain. This property has our Chromelux aluminum hanging on the wall. Mm -hmm. And they've added accoutrements to that, as you can see, with the, the surfboards, surfboards on the bottom left. So they've created quite a feel for this. It's a very long hallway and you walk down, you see these surfboards displayed on one end. Mm -hmm. and then you've got a combination of artwork and surfboards throughout. Uh, quite beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Hospital, this is really neat. And I think hospital applications are wonderful for you know, Chromalux products. The, the reason the hospitals have really paid attention to this product versus some of the other print technologies mm -hmm is like we talked about with the sublimation process in that it is a transfer from mm -hmm. the gas to a solid mm -hmm. and it's really encapsulated in our coatings. Right. Well, when that's all complete and that process is done, what you have is a closed cell surface. Yes. So a closed cell surface means smells, um, things like bacteria, mm -hmm. um, issues with hospitals where they have to wipe this material down each day to make sure that that room right. is absolutely ready for the next patient in care. It doesn't matter what's in that cleaning card. I think you and Terry actually experimented with yes. MEK on a panel. Right. So you can see that um, in the um, webinar archives where I took um, some MEK and I, I wore gloves so it wouldn't burn through my hands. Yeah, it's pretty um, and then I took a sublimated panel, put some, I think I even squirted directly onto the panel and rubbed it down with a rag and it did not mar it, it did not take off right. the colors. And that's an extreme. You, you, people aren't going around using MEK as cleaners, but should they spill something on there that's pretty harsh? There aren't too many products you can do that with. I, I wouldn't want to do that with canvas or something else right. that you see typically as a wall decor style of product. But whether it's MEK or bleach wipe, or even mm -hmm. if someone came in and graffitied this piece of artwork, you could rub it off with paint thinner. Yes, paint thinner, yeah, would not mar it. So uh, here is another application, but this one's outdoors and well, it's a little yeah. bit unique. So this is kind of cool. Um, this year we just heard that we have won the award at SGIA yes. for Congratulations. Product of the Year yes. for our extended life product. So this is Chromalux with a sp very specific um, set of attributes that allow it to be used outdoors and displayed outside. Right. Sublimation has never been available for outside No, use. usually I quote up to six months in a, an ideal environment because right. the dyes are, will just start tearing apart, breaking right. down and fading. Right. 
and we last for decades, you know, up to 100 years indoors. Right. Outdoors is a different story. Now we have a product specifically made for outdoors. This is an application where they're basically trying to take the aesthetic of air conditioning units that are on top of this building. Yes, the not And so change pretty. it, make it look nicer so that the patients who are in the room looking out the window aren't necessarily looking at a commercial air conditioning unit but rather something that puts a little bit of a smile on their face. Right, and also speaking about um, the extended product, um, Roland has a warranty with these products. So using our Roland Texart inks, it is warranted up to two years outdoors for more of the photograph images and up to three years outdoors for signage type images. So it's a great partnership that we have. Absolutely. We work hand in hand with Roland to make sure and that we've got all the and certification done. Um, and, and we are quite confident that this product will do exactly what you need for an outdoor application. All right. So more health care. So instead of aluminum, we Instead of aluminum, right? Yeah, some folks will come at you and they want something that's more of a price point product. So we yes. do have that in our mix of media as well. This is MDF. So you have a black edge rather than a floating frame with a mm -hmm. raw aluminum edge. In this case, it's a black edge. And we have a number of different finishes available with that, but it's a really nice environment, the same sort of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But in this case, maybe it's not the super high-end mm -hmm. aluminum chrome lunch product, mm -hmm. but we still have all those same attributes in a more price-conscious product line. Absolutely. Oh, airports. You probably live in them traveling back and forth. Unfortunately, yes. So <laughs> this airport application is sort of unique in that this is really a partnership between the photographer, between the, the lab who's actually producing the work, and mm -hmm. the airport who is the beneficiary of having this artwork placed on the walls at no charge to them. Right. The photographer loves it because this is now a gallery where yes. millions of people are going through and seeing the artwork. And next to it, and very close, if you look down next to those panels, you can see a little placard. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can go and order those panels directly from the print house right. and have them shipped straight to your home. So quite a nice combination of Chrome Lux aluminum and, and an actual revenue stream for everyone Right. Involved. Now this one's a little bit closer to home to us here in Orange County at the Orange County Airport. Yeah, John Wayne Airport for those of you who know it. This is actually a private hangar and with this hangar they've got, this is multiple panels, four foot, about four foot tall um, and it's eight foot in length that are butted together seamlessly. So really beautiful. nice, very high end job that was done. Um, custom fabrication application with our clear silver aluminum. So in yeah. this case you're actually not a white based aluminum, but what you're seeing is the aluminum, the actual aluminum through the image. So mm -hmm. those of you familiar with metallic papers, yes, um, this is truly metallic in the sense that it's metal that you're looking at right. through the image. And with some images, that, that metal that shines through just looks beautiful. And I've done that where I've had the same image, one on white gloss, one on clear gloss, and each one just has its beautiful points. Right, right. If you have light and you have the right image, the clear aluminum is stunning. Absolutely, absolutely. Restaurant installations. So a lot of times, you know, I think of restaurants with, um, you know, maybe the vinyl awnings or the vinyl translucent film and light boxes to even um, UV printed boards, right. but you can definitely use sublimation as well. Uh, for some of the reasons we already talked about, which is mm -hmm. the cleanability component. Yes. So we can clean this with anything. So in a restaurant environment, you've got all kinds of things in the air and airborne yeah. um, particles that are sticking to basically any Grease. signage that's in the area. <laughs> and that can all be wiped off with, again, anything in that cleaning car, bleach wipes, any right. can, whatever they've got in there. No fears. This application is MDF panels and they're in sections. If you look close, you can see some lines there. Mm -hmm. They're pulling those panels off and changing them based on who's rented out that kitchen space for the particular um, event that's taking place okay. that day. So it's mobile. Uh, oh, this one is beautiful. I love this. So one thing to notice is it doesn't have to be rectangular panels. <laughs> right. You Good can point. definitely cut them. And in the previous webinar that Terry and I did, we talked about um, recommended methods to pre-cut um, before you sublimate because you still have that protective right. film over it. You want to leave that on, do the cutting, whatever that gives the best clean edge, right. and then sublimate. Yeah, this is different too. You think about wall, or you think about decor and quote unquote wall decor. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is on the ceiling. Right. So you walk in the room and it just commands your attention. You start to look up to figure out what is that above your head. Right. And then recognize it's artwork, really, really unique artwork. And it's in Santa Cruz, right on the wharf perfect environment and a really stunning application. Right. One of the questions that comes up is how big can you go? So the panels, the large panels that you get, you can get 
um, from Chrome Lux is four by eight. Correct. Four right. by eight. And then from there, you can always butt them together like we saw. Like we've seen, well, there's another one coming up as right. well where you can seamlessly butt them together and create a, a really huge piece. Right. This is our most inexpensive material. Right. So when it comes down to what is the least expensive option I have, but still give me all the attributes that right. I want, this is it in the hardboard line. Yes. So our tempered hardboard actually does that, accomplishes and checks all the boxes. Mm -hmm. What comes in is our least expensive price point. Great, great. And then here's a place that's local to us here in Southern California. Not too far away, close yeah. to wine country here in Southern California. Just a little uh, pub, restaurant pub application. Mm -hmm. And these are tabletops. They sit underneath the patio and indoors. Mm -hmm. And they've been in there for over two years now. They're very, very um, pleased with how these have held up. Even right. there's some pretty brutal circumstances where every weekend they convert to a DJ application. So all those tables get flipped on their head, stacked in the corner, mm -hmm. and reset up and redistributed. Uh, after the weekend's done. So right. some really heavy abuse to these Yeah, things. so the durability, if you, if you just have a vinyl with the overlamp, it, the edges could lift, and so this is more of a permanent. Yeah, that's a great point, because it, it, it's literally inside the coating. There is right. nothing to lift or peel or crack. Right. It's literally part of the tabletop coating itself. Right, right. Okay, education. We're seeing more and more educational institutions with these um, decor. It's representing our MDF panels again. Mm -hmm. I think it just unique ways. Notice how the shapes aren't static squares or rectangles. They've got some unique stuff in there. Right. And so some's decorated and some isn't. Absolutely. And then here at Cal Poly, here in California. Yeah, Cal so Poly. This is the example of this particular wall is where it was seamed. Exactly. So they, they're, they've seamless. seen multiple panels put together to create a seamless image that's much larger than the four foot by eight foot panel mm -hmm. limitation that we have creates a really stunning environment here, very unique. Uh, if you're on Cal Poly or near Cal Poly, they have almost 700 wow. Chromalux images on display throughout that campus. Wow. They're big believers in the product and the durability yes. and the aesthetic appeal that it creates. Right, right. Okay, here's one. More the application wall. there. Just yeah. sharing with things that are important to the school and the environment and mm -hmm. creating a real sense of family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, business, public facilities. This is neat. Like you said, it doesn't always have to be sublimated. You can um, have a, a mixture of both. So in this situation, this is kind of like a for rent office space. It is. So this is an application where if you're outside of your normal home network or home office and you need to rent an office space, mm -hmm. you can come in and rent by the hour or by the day. Mm -hmm. And they've got some wall decor down in the bottom left, so mm -hmm. typically how we see the product displayed. Right. But on the right side, you see some panels that are cut out for the expression of ideas. Right. And what's really unique, particularly to the Roland family, is mm -hmm. most of the Roland applications are you have guys with commercial print houses who yes. have fabrication capabilities. Right. So getting away from the rectangle square mentality and mm. actually saying let's create something more unique, more inviting, mm -hmm. that's what's happened here with the way this is cut in a very small kind of a wave pattern. Right. So it's a really unique environment. And it's functional because it's used as a dry erase board. It is steel, so you can put magnets up there. That's key to the steel. People love the steel because you can still put a magnet against it and a magnet sticks. So you can add the actual paper component to it, right. combine with the dry erase component to it. And again, you've got Very a functional. Product. Functional art. That's the keyword I like to throw around. Okay. This is neat. Once again, very clean, not Subtle. a lot of graphics, and not a sign. It's used for a desk. Again, fabrication, custom fabrication. Again, not using it as wall decor. There's no photograph here. There's no big, bright mm -mm. colors. It's very, very subtle, mm -hmm. very, very classy, very well done, um, custom fabricated fascia to this desk. How about that wood? That looks very, very much like your maple product where you can see the natural grains. Is that? We do have a maple product that looks just like that, but it also allows you to sublimate directly to it. With right, all we those actually have a question about can you sublimate on wood? So that was my segue in well done. to explain yeah. that. We do have a maple product, yes. Right, it looks very, very similar to that. It has that coating, yep. just like all the other coatings with the durability. And in the key there is just choosing the right image where you can see the grains come through. Right. You want and that you, negative space so you can actually see some right. wood in contrast with the text or the art. Work. Right. If you have something that's so dark, like something like this would not be great for that with all the black. Right. right. Yeah, if that was white instead of black for the background, it would be beautiful. Right. Okay. 
here. This is so fun. I love that. So, so yeah, you go elbows. back a couple slides with the tabletops. So we, we have in our stock environment, we have squares and we have circles. circles. Yeah, standard. Okay. Not ultra creative, but they're yeah. there. They're available and they're stock items. This is, again, the fabrication, the kind of people, the Roland family mm -hmm. with the fabrication opportunities. Yes. They took our stock panel four foot by eight foot and then custom fabricated into the shape of a guitar, mm -hmm. added the artwork component to it, and now you've got really unique display environment for the store. Right, and speaking of sublimation, I know we're talking about rigid subsidies, but the two purses up top, those are sublimated as well. So, a little fabric application. You know, maybe the beautiful, you know, really what's so neat about sublimation is you don't have to make a yes or no decision between fabric or rigid. Right. It's really all about what you want to offer because the same RT printer, the same press, the same ink set, the same paper allows mm -hmm. you to do everything that sublimation involved. It's just a matter of deciding what avenue you want to go Right. After. You start the same. You're printing on that paper first. Yeah. Everything begins with that printed sublimation transfer Right. Paper. Right. Okay. All right. This is neat um, in a vineyard. So the application here, aluminum. And so you're in explaining that this is an underground cave. Yeah, this is a Napa. This is a 17,000 square foot wine cave. Uh huh. So the entire winemaking operation is underground. Mm -hmm. And then within that, they've got wine tasting rooms. And these rooms were quite stark, as, as we were told. And they really sat down there. Didn't, you felt like you were missing the, the experience of being on the vineyard. Right. So the owner um, contracted a photographer to come out and shoot the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to create something expansive. This is over 30 feet long. Right. And you can see on the left side, you've got multiple Stacked. layered images yeah. creating a really, nice really draws you in. Right. And now that you're sitting at the table, you feel like you're outdoors, but you're inside this really beautiful wine cave, enjoying cheese and wine and chocolates that all go together. And really, you walk out with a quite unique experience. All right. And I know that we're running short on time. So thank you for hanging in there with us. We still have a little few more things to go over in regards to applications. More aluminum there. Yeah. Uh, oh, high-end car dealerships. So yeah, most of us think of signage. We think of really inexpensive direct print, mm -hmm. dye bond signage, or paper signage in out. And it's certainly that world exists. And there's still a exists. lot of it. There are also people and brands who really command a very high-end look and appeal or someone who wants to stand out with their brand. Mm -hmm. And the Chromalux Aluminum does just that. It really does stand out. Right. And a lot, like you said, a lot of our Roland cu um, customers already have these accounts. Exactly. So right. this just fits right in. Museum, a little bit more cost, price sensitive. Price point, right? Price and, point again. But need the durability. So this is a great yeah, application. that's a hardboard and MDF application. You don't have to worry about the edges lifting from all the little fingers. But well, most importantly, that little thing. scratching, because what happens is every child, I think, and even some adults, want to yeah. see if they can scratch off the letters. Yeah. <laughs> and in our case, we're embedded inside the coating, so that, that can't happen. Right, right. Okay, so here is going to be the, the overview of some different ROI. So this is just materials only. So we're, we're looking at different substrates. This is four by eight panels, whether it's aluminum or, or whatever. And, and like I said, these are also, you know your overhead costs, all your labor. These are just a look at materials cost only. Right. We're looking at low quantity, up to 10 pieces maybe, five, 10 pieces. And then we're looking at high quantity. And, and so it's just a range. And also if it's fine art, you know it's gonna be a lot more. So right. this is just an average. Now, if you're scrambling to take screenshots and whatever, don't worry. It's being archived, so we can always go back to look at some of the suggested numbers and how it's sold. Yeah, I think the important takeaway here is just to show an overview. This is really a 30,000-foot view of mm -hmm. what it looks like. You make the investment. Mm -hmm. What does a panel cost? MSRP on a panel is $189.95 yeah. for Chrome Lux. Look um, at the ink. And then look at the ink cost. Five cents are, are a square foot. Fractional here. It so, ranges from a cent to right. five cents a square The change in your foot. pocket can cover the ink and paper costs. Right. Um, you've got some dollars invested in your panel, but once you do that, you've got anywhere from $23 to $32 based on is this a low volume, high volume client? Is this someone that you know that represents mm -hmm. a lot of money to your business? So this just gives you a look at what can I expect to generate right. from a revenue standpoint. Right, and, and we just chose four pieces per hour. These are not, we are spit, you know, printing as quickly as we can just to get it out there. These are high quality. You take your time. The higher number of passes, right. the the higher resolution. Versus doing signage, you know, vector art signage, we can run a lot quicker. Right, or even RL fabrics. Right. You know, for some of the prints, you're running two pass, 540 by 360 DPI, um, not with um, metal or rigid substrates. 
All right, so I'm just going to go through them real quickly so you can just take a look. Here's high quantity. Now, this is for MDF to right. give you an idea. So, so basically 19 to $25 a square foot mm -hmm. as a good generic overview of what right. you can expect to garner from oh. that. And then high quantity. Next is the hardboard, a little bit for the price sensitive. Yeah, like we said, the price sensitive. We, we do have that. We've listened. We know that there are people out there that need mm -hmm. to really focus on a price point. You can get from 16 to $20 mm -hmm. um, a square foot on right. that is what it's right. selling for. Yeah, and, and this is also if you are a wholesaler selling to other signage companies who are right. not ready to get into sublimation yet. So. Yeah, you're only paying $2 a square foot for that, and you're selling for 16 to 20 Yeah. Um, that's a pretty good proposition. And this is for steel, great in hospitals, schools. You can ride on that it, dry erase. Yeah, again. Yeah. yeah, it's seventeen to twenty-one dollars typically what we see in that. Mm -hmm. And again, those are just ranges of what what we see in the market today. All right. And then the last thing is things to make sure you include right. in your quote. So you're you're doing high quality work. Right. Don't absorb all those different costs. So make sure proofing costs is in there. Very important. The file preparation, color correction costs. You know, making sure that you know the artwork that's given to you that you are going to get the best right. out of it. Especially if you're doing the corporate signage that you have to match certain corporate right. colors. That's where that proofing comes in. You want to sign off on this is what you expect to get in larger format. Yes. Um, definitely a critical component. And make sure mounting, framing, all those supports, make sure those are discussed right. as well. Um, you have these beautiful panels. Well, make sure it gets displayed properly because the last thing you want is not taking into account the weight of it so you don't want these panels falling on anyone if they're not well, mounted properly. Yeah, in addition to that, it's another revenue opportunity, right? I yeah. Mean, obviously, if you're in the business today, you do fabrication. There's a number of options when it comes to framing from low-end mm -hmm. utilitarian framing yeah. or mounting to very high-end and extravagant. So again, it right. creates another opportunity to talk about what you guys want to accomplish yeah. as your client and vendor relationship. Right. It could be those develops. large seamless murals right. too if you want it staggered right. the, in the cave, the cave of wonders. Exactly. And then packaging. It's not like you're just, hey, we're just going to put it in a box and ship it by UPS. So make sure you're charging for the crate to hold everything in. You're layering to make sure the surfaces aren't getting scratched, everything's strapped down and, and shipping. Right. So right. those are very, very important. All right. So in re oh, he, here's a good question. Any issues with underground applications like in the cave yeah, the and the humidity? That was great. That's one of the reasons why it was selected. So great question. One of the reasons actually the owner was initially thinking he wanted to use canvas, mm -hmm. but canvas because of underground, because of humidity, um, all those reasons, they said, this is perfect. This metal has zero issues with humidity, mm -hmm. right. zero Once issues with moisture. Once you're done sublimating it. Right. It is absolutely no problem at all for that application mm -hmm. and quite unique. All right. Okay. Okay, let's see. Gosh, we have quite a few questions that I know we're running over. Um, so we are going to get to your questions. We have your email address. And, and also, if you are going to be at SGIA that's coming up, both of I'll our booths will be there are going to have these large four by eight panels. Yes. So I know in our booth, we have one with the white gloss. And then we have another four by eight that is the clear gloss that you can see the metallic. And side then, by side, yep. yeah, and we have that maple one. Yes, you do. And, and also the hardboard, I believe. Yes. So we have different types and, and you can see all the different effects. So please stop by our booth hello, to check yeah. it out and, and talk to us. And we can definitely go through more questions there. So, and, Chrome, and you'll be there with Chrome Lux Chrome in your Lux will booth. Chrome Lux be there as well. Please and stop by, say hello. Yes, and especially those who are also looking into the promotional items, the, the different Unisub products will be also displayed. So you can right. take we'll a look Right, we'll have catalogs as well that, that have a, a, a large assortment of those types of products. We know, what was it, 40% mm -hmm. roughly we're looking at right. this as an opportunity. And we can certainly answer that for you at the show. Well, thank you so much. Stay tuned. Um, just to answer a few survey questions, because we'd love to hear about some of the topics you'd like to learn. Or if you have any other questions, uh, please continue typing them in. We will address them. We will email you back. 
And, and once again, this webinar is archived, so you can always go back and take a listen, look at all those ROIs again, just to give you an idea. Remember, that's just for materials costs only, but these are some suggested costs. So once again, we thank you so much for your time with us and have a great day.